second and sign in on my phone to see if anyone has any questions while we do this tutorial. This is going to be a good one. It's on Beats. I know some people find Beats kind of intimidating. I find them I don't know. I actually used to not like Beats, and I feel like I've become a lover of Beats since becoming a part of the CSA. I think organic local Beats taste a lot sweeter and a lot better than a lot of the traditional Beats that you might see served in some restaurants, or just like, as I remember, Beats as a little kid. So, um, flavor profile is definitely a lot better when we're talking about some good organic local Beats. So. Just to get started, uh, my name is Katie. I am the CSA coach with Shared Legacy Farms. Today's tutorial is live, so I will be checking on my phone to see if we have any questions. And we're gonna talk everything beets, which are kind of like a nutrient superstar in my book. So I don't like anyone to get rid of any beets. Um, so when you buy beets or when you find beets, um, Shared Legacy, we get, the, we get red beets. There can also be golden beets. Technically, the red are a little bit higher as far as antioxidants go, but either beets you're going to prepare or use for the most part the same way. They both have a really similar taste. So when you bring beets home, usually they have their greens attached, obviously, to the root here. Um, you just want to make sure that you separate the greens from the actual root vegetable and store them separately. So when I get my beets home, I just cut the greens off. I store the roots in a bag and I store the greens in a separate bag in my crisper drawer. The greens are going to be good for probably about a week. The beets are going to be good for like two to three weeks. So there's no rush to have to use them up. You don't have to feel like they're going to go bad like some of the other veggies that you might have in your refrigerator. Um, <clears throat> overall, when you're looking at different sizes, Taste and nutrients doesn't really matter when it comes um, to the different sizes. They're all pretty much going to be the same. The fresher the beet is, the sweeter it is. So if you do have them in your fridge and you want that sweeter taste, then you're going to want to use them sooner than later. The longer they sit in your fridge, they're going to lose some of that sweetness. If you were at the store, even the farmer's market actually choosing beets, you just want to make sure when you're getting them that they aren't um, mushy or soggy at all or getting soft, soft. So they should be hard like a potato or a carrot or your other root veggies. So once they start to get soft, they're gonna go bad on you pretty fast. If you leave the greens attached to them during storage, the greens are gonna draw a lot of moisture and nutrients out of the, the root veggie and that's gonna make them softer faster. So um, other than that, it's pretty easy to pick up some beets. So make sure you detach them. You store both parts of the vegetable unwashed in your fridge. You don't need to wash it until you go to use it. So I've had these in my fridge for probably four or five days, so they're still super, super fresh. When you go to use beets, you can eat them cooked or raw. I like them both ways. Um, when you go to, before you go to prepare them, you want to make sure you scrub them really well. So these are actually all washed. I scrub them with a little veggie scrubber, which is some cold water. These I just washed as well in some cold water, and I just dried them with a towel. I am going to use them right now, so I'm actually not worried about spinning them dry or getting them super dry. So raw beets. Raw beets are traditionally either grated or shredded. You can also spiralize a beet uh, for something different or something a little fun. So some people will shred a beet in something like this, um, just like a grater. You could do it that way. You could also use the grating application or shredding application or whatever you want to call it on your food processor. If you have that, that's going to be another easy thing. If you are going to grate raw beets, you just want to make sure that you peel them first. So. When I go to prepare these, I typically, if I'm going to eat them raw, just cut off the top and the bottom, and then I will peel them with either a small knife or even this veggie peeler here to kind of peel that skin off if I'm going to eat them raw. If I'm going to cook them, I tend to just leave that peel on. It comes off a lot easier after it's already been cooked. So 
I do like fresh raw beets, shredded or grated. I will grate up a few of them, keep them in the fridge, and throw them on top of salads. It adds some color. It adds a little bit of a sweet flavor to different types of salads. The other fun thing that you can do is if you have a spiralizer like this, um, you can actually spiralize a beet for something fun, which is also a great thing to add to a salad and also something really fun to get into your kids diet if they not aren't used to eating beets. So if you go back and look at some of our Share Legacy Farms videos, we have one about kitchen appliances. This was definitely on like the 2.0 list, so not something that's super critical to have in your kitchen, but could be a game changer if you um, if you were looking for some different ways to get your family to eat some veggies, you can spiralize. Zucchini is a really common thing, sweet potatoes. You can also spiralize beets. Super fun. So I bet you a lot of children might be more willing to kind of try a beet if you give them something fun like this versus that canned soggy beet that I know that I grew up with. So spiralizing raw beets, something fun to do. You will notice as I go through this tutorial that my fingers are probably going to get pretty red. That's just the nature of working with beets, especially the raw ones. Um, lemon juice will help once you're done working with beets to kind of get some of that stain off a little bit faster. So I'll probably use this lemon later and then save the rind and maybe use that to scrub my hands a little bit. So spiralizing beets, grating them, good for four or five days once you do this. Throw them in the fridge and add them to just about anything. I have also spiralized beets and sweet potatoes and the stalk of broccoli and roasted them together. So you can also roast the beet like this if you feel like eating an entire beet is not something that's going to be super appetizing to your household. So spiralizing I think is a good way to go. Um, beets are also really great cooked. So an easy thing to do when it comes to cooking beets is to roast them. And like I said, the peels are gonna come off fairly easy once they are, once they're cooked. Um, so you don't have to worry about peeling them first. I am going to just chop, I'm gonna chop these in half. Um, these are smaller beets. They are organic. So the larger ones I'm going to chop in half. And these smaller little guys I'm going to leave whole. These smaller ones. So when you are roasting vegetables, you just want to make sure that they're all about the same size so that way they cook at about the same time. These scraps here, the tops and bottoms of these beets, and you could also just roast them whole if you wanted to. Um, I am going to compost. Normally I talk about throwing things in a veggie scrap bag to make veggie broth later on with. Uh, these are not going to make the best broth. Um, they kind of give it a super, super earthy-ish taste and they really tend to make a cloudy broth. They really change the color a lot, so I don't add these to my broth. You could if you wanted to. It's not going to make it bad for you by any means, but it definitely changes the flavor profile of the broth. So I've got my beets in here. I also have a peeled sweet potato. So you can roast beets alone, or you could add some other veggies, depending, I guess, on how many beets you have or what feel like eating, right? So I'm throwing some sweet potato in here because sweet potato is definitely a family favorite and sweet potatoes are also a hardier veggie so they're going to take a little while to cook the same, about the same time as beets. You 
wouldn't necessarily just want to mix like broccoli and beets together because the broccoli is going to cook so much faster. So beets will roast well with sweet potatoes, white potatoes, carrots, turnips. Turnips would be a great item to kind of add in here. You could add some of those lighter veggies like broccoli if you wanted to, but you'd want to add them towards the end of the roast time. So you'd want to kind of give these guys a little bit of a head start. So I've got sweet potatoes and beets in here. This is a super, super colorful thing to kind of roast, right? So I typically for roasting, I turn the oven to like 375, 400, sometimes even as high as 425. Um, so I'd probably go with about 400. And I line my sheet here, my baking sheet with some parchment paper for easy cleanup later. I simply pour a little bit of oil on top. You could also, if you were in a really big hurry, just throw these on your sheet and pour the oil and seasonings on the sheet if you're in a hurry. I'm just going to make sure these are coated pretty well, so I'm doing it in this bowl today. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to use some salt and pepper. Rosemary and thyme go really, really, really well on beets. So you could do rosemary, thyme, you could also do some garlic. I'm going to keep it super simple today and do salt and pepper. So you could roast these as a side dish for dinner. I always like to have some roasted vegetables kind of prepped ahead and in my fridge. So I'll cook these today, but these could very well be part of my breakfast tomorrow. So I like to have some roasted hearty veggies in the fridge. And then in the morning for a fast breakfast, I can heat them up in my cast iron pan with a little bit of oil and throw a fried egg on top. So super easy way to get veggies in in the morning is having some pre-roasted, ready to go in the fridge. So I just have oil, salt and pepper on these guys. Again, carrots, turnips, you could add some other veggies here. Brussels sprouts would be amazing too. And I will roast these for probably 35, 40 minutes. I might turn them once, give them a stir while they're in there. But roasting veggies is one of the easiest things that you can do. Um, and if I had time, sometimes I'll do two or three pans at a time. Again, just to kind of get them in the fridge and then they're going to be good for the next four or five days. So I can always reheat them, especially in a... Um, on top of your stove with some fried eggs for breakfast or even with an easy protein for dinner. So super easy, can mix well with lots of other veggies. When those beets come out of the oven after being roasted, the peels are going to come off really easily or I might actually just leave them on. To be honest with you, most of the time I just leave them on. We love the way that they taste. Farmer Kurt does a great job with these beets. If you think that the beets taste a little too earthy for you, you can just easily take the peels off, um, but it's going to be so much easier once they're cooked to do that. So I would definitely not put yourself through peeling the beets if you're planning on steaming or roasting. Do it afterwards. Really good nutrition, uh, nutritious side dish, by the way. So beets are really popular right now, especially in like the athletic community. They have natural nitrates and... Naturally occurring nitrates are a lot different than the nitrates that you hear about in like cured meats, like hot dogs and sausages. Naturally occurring nitrates actually can help increase blood flow and improve circulation. So beets are really important right now, or being looked at right now, um, for athletic recovery and delivering oxygen to muscles. And some studies even show that athletes that consume beets on a regular basis can perform up to 15% longer than athletes that don't. So, super cool. If you're trying to, like, work out this summer, you might want to get some beets in your life. Also, cardiovascular health, because they can increase oxygen and blood flow. Going to be a good idea, right? 
All right, so I'll get those roasting in a little bit. I am also gonna do something a little bit different during this tutorial. I'm gonna make uh, some muffins. So Erin and the Shared Legacy Farms CSA group shared a great recipe with making some muffins. And we talked about pureeing different veggies in our picky, eating, picky, picky eaters video a few months ago. And hiding veggies, especially some of these super nutrient dense ones, was one of our recommended topics. So I thought I'd share this recipe with you. It's from The Minimalist Baker. I will make sure that I post the link uh, below the video. So let me see. I am going to make these chocolate muffins. And I will tell you that normally I am not a baker because I view a lot of recipes as guidelines and not necessarily this is what you have to do. So I know baking, you usually have to pretty much follow the rules across the board. So I steamed some beets. I guess technically we would call it steam. So they would be ready to put in these chocolate muffins. And I'm gonna grab a fork. prior to, I guess, roasting them, steaming them. What I did is I just added a little bit of water to the pan and then cut my beets into kind of larger pieces. And I cooked them covered for about 30 or 40 minutes. Um, so you can see now these peels just come right off. A lot easier than getting out the veggie peeler. And if I was just gonna eat these, I would not even peel them. It doesn't bug me. You can definitely eat the peels. But since I'm pureeing them and putting them in muffins, I'm gonna take it off like the recipe says. This is a really good method if you just want to cook some beets and keep them cold in your refrigerator and add them to salads, is to cook them in a little bit of water like this. I don't like to boil beets in a large amount of water because you do lose some of the nutrients in the water, the water soluble stuff. So I like kind of roasting, baking them in just a little bit of water and then I might even use some of this water to puree these guys. So if you boil or submerge the beets in a large amount, you're probably gonna lose a little bit more. So I just covered these. So if I wasn't gonna make muffins, I could store these cooked beets and slice them up and put them on salads, use them as a side dish, have them with some hard boiled eggs. They're gonna be good for a five days or so in the refrigerator cooked. You could also pickle them. The ebook that Shared Legacy Farms has on beets that we will share in the comments of this video, the ebook has a recipe on pickling beets. So you can pickle beets cooked like this by boiling them or steaming them first. You can also make refrigerator beet or pickle refrigerator pickle beets where you don't cook them first, but it does take a little bit longer. So if you pickle cooked beets like this, they're going to be ready the next day versus if you do a refrigerator pickle with a raw sliced beet, it's going to be a lot crunchier, but it's going to take almost a week to cure. So I will make sure that I post the recipe if you're interested in making a crunchier pickled beet. Um, there is a good one that I know of that's pretty easy and it allows for that crunchier 
crunchier type, type texture. So I have these all peeled. The recipe that Aaron shared from the Minimalist Baker called for about a cup of beet puree. I'm going to have a little bit more than a cup here, but that's okay. to go out and get some help <laughs> opening this. Hold on one second. Beet puree. 
I really want to try adding a beet puree to hummus or making a hummus with beet puree. Um, one of our CSA members did that this past week and it looked really pretty. Hummus also freezes really easily. So if you did like beet hummus, you could make some hummus up and freeze it. I'll show you guys what I do with my veggie purees before the uh, before we finish up here. So <clears throat> I've got all these in here. I have my whisk. We'll whisk it up quickly. And then we're going to stir in milk. You could use regular milk. You could use unsweetened almond milk or unsweetened pet milk, cashew milk, all those crazy ones that are at the store now, whatever you prefer. And then we're going to add some cocoa powder and flour. So I already have, I think it's a half a cup of pure cocoa powder. You could also use sweet potatoes in this recipe or butternut squash pureed carrots, you could definitely play around and use some other vegetables. So if you find that you have kids and you're trying to hide some veggies in or just get them in where you can, this would be a good recipe. So it says a cup, one and one third cup of flour. I've just got some all purpose gluten free flour here. I think that's about, about right. Um, and then it just says to mix it up, and it says not to use this. So I guess I'm not going to use that. Maybe I might have to, and I'll use this. And it says to stir it up. This would be really great with sweet potatoes. So I used to be a person that was like, no. I'm not going to hide veggies. My kids are going to love all the veggies. But now that I'm a mom, I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm hiding vegetables. So like I said, because beets are super, super good for us, they have 50 times the antioxidant potential as carrots. Even if I can get half a beet hidden in a little, a little healthy muffin that my kids will think it's like a treat, I will take it, right? Why not? All right. It also recommends to add some chocolate chips, which I got some, but I actually am not going to add them. Because <laughs> um, I feel like there is a decent amount of sugar in here. I'm just going to turn this back on in case you guys have any questions. Um, I feel like there's a different, decent amount of sugar in here and these smell like brownies, you guys. Like legit brownies. So props to Erin for finding this recipe. And this actually said 375. So <clears throat> got this batter all mixed up. And we can just spoon. Spoon it into you guys can see how thick that is. Um, when Erin made these in our group, she actually topped them too with chocolate chips and they really, really looked like homemade chocolate muffins and she said her kids loved them. So I've got a good six, seven beets in here and it says it makes about 12 muffins. So if I can serve dessert and get half a beet in everybody for dessert, I'm gonna feel pretty good about it. So you can see how easy that is. I'm actually, I'll do the rest of this after we finish up this video, but that would be a really great technique if you were trying to hide some veggies in, <clears throat> chocolate muffins.
Yeah, never thought I'd be making <laughs> chocolate muffins with beets, but hey, how things change, right? So the other thing you could have done with that puree, I'm gonna pull out of my freezer over here. Um, is you could have just froze it in some ice cube trays or in some silicone ice cube trays. I do that all the time. These were some pureed carrots in a bag like this. Um, and I just froze them in chunks. I also have pureed spinach and carrot tops like this. And I add these to spaghetti sauces and to chili all year round. I laugh now because I can probably get probably get almost a pound of spinach in my spaghetti sauce and no one no one even bats an eye. They don't even know. So that's some great ways to use your beets cooked or raw. Um, my hands aren't even that even actually that bad. So this, what we didn't do and I don't have enough beets left um, to pickle today is pickling and I will make sure that I post that link for that refrigerator pickle recipe and our ebook also has a pickling recipe so make sure you check back in the comments for that so you could also freeze beets if you really weren't sure what to do with them you would just boil or steam them or roast them peel them and throw them in a ziploc bag and then throw them in the freezer and that would be it. So they're really easy to freeze. You just want to make sure that you freeze them, freeze them cooked. So another easy exit strategy. All right. Uh, last thing on our list today are some ways to use the greens. And greens, beet greens, I think are really pretty. Uh, you can see they've got colorful, colorful stems and dark green tops. Down south, apparently, it is super popular to just eat the tops, and they actually throw away the root or the beet that we usually eat. So I'm going to quick set this down. Whereas a lot of us in the Toledo area have thrown these greens away before, but we really want to make sure we try to use every part of the vegetable that we can. So. Again, I just showed you those ice cubes. You could blanch these greens, boil them in some water, 30 seconds, maybe a minute, put them in an ice bath. You could freeze them whole like that or chop them up a little bit finer. Today I'm gonna to chop these up a little bit. So you could blanch and freeze the greens in whatever size you wanted them to be when you go to use them. So soups or stews, you probably wanna cut them up a little bit like this. Or you could puree them and freeze them into the ice cubes like I do to add to other darker sauces or chilies or spaghetti squashes. You can add them to salads. They are great in frittatas and an omelet with some scrambled eggs. Greens cook down really, really well. So you can get a huge handful of greens cooked down into just a few bites. Tonight I'm actually going to make this as more of like a side dish. So I am going to... Heat up a little bit of oil and butter in a pan here. Um, probably a couple tablespoons of butter is what the recipe calls for and a little bit of oil burner tends to heat up pretty fast. Um, and then I'm going to chop up some Shared Legacy Farms fresh garlic that we got in our box this week. So fresh garlic that hasn't been cured yet or dried. So we've got to use it up. Super great flavor really strong garlicky flavor. Garlic goes really well with greens. Um, so does a little bit of lemon at the end. So that's what I'm going to use my lemon here for. Um, 
would also be really great just to fry an egg on top of this. So I'm going to heat this oil up. another good way to kind of get in these beet greens so adding a little bit to a stir fry um, salads I find that the finer you chop these greens up the more likely people are going to eat more of them if they see this huge beet green on their salad they're probably gonna be a little skeptical if they're new to the to the beet green story so I've got my butter and oil here heating up. I'm gonna add this fresh garlic. Give it a little bit of a stir. You could also serve these cooked greens along with the roasted meats if you wanted to. in or a protein in and I always always have it out on my counter it's kind of like my go-to but um, you could obviously use a skillet whatever you wanted to use so this heated up pretty fast the garlic um, it's pretty transparent now I can smell it the oils definitely sizzling here, so I'm just going to throw these beets in along with the little pieces of stems. Give it a stir. Kind of let that butter and oil cook a little bit. And I'm going to cover it. I did blanch some of my other beet greens and freeze them into those ice cube trays. So um, I like to eat cooked greens, but I think that my fellow CSA members know sometimes we get a lot of them this time of year. So when I freeze them into those cubes or you know blanch them and put them in the freezer, they're going to be good until December, January at this point. So I'm going to be getting my fresh, nutrient-dense greens in almost year-round if I continue to do that throughout the season. So I do really, really like that as an exit strategy. You can throw these in skillet meals or pasta dishes. I know Farmer Kurt and Corinna really like a skillet meal. That's one of their kind of exit strategies to eat up a lot of their greens. So these are definitely wilting down and cooking down a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. I've got my sea salt that I like. You should always grind your own pepper. So much better for you than the dried out, already ground stuff. Alright, so those are about cooked down. I am going to use a little bit of fresh lemon on top. I'm actually, maybe I have a little bit of seeds in here, I'll just scoop out. I like adding lemon to my cooked greens um, right at the end. I feel like it gives them a really nice taste. So these greens are totally wilted down, I will show you. In a second here and I'm just going to add a little bit of lemon probably just half the one there now ideally if it was just me right now and I weren't cooking this as a side for other people too for dinner I'd throw a fried egg in here and that would be an amazing quick little meal or breakfast so I'm going to show you guys that whole pan of greens just cooked down into just just this much, um, but really pretty, super easy side dish. 
So that is it. We are done with our beat tutorial. I will definitely check back and see if anyone has any questions. I will let you know how my muffins turned out. I'm super excited. Rather, I will let you know how everyone else in my house thinks they turned out. I can get them to eat some chocolate beet muffins. So um, thanks for tuning in. Again, check back in the comments for the ebook and the other links to the recipes. And have a great night.